still As the whole world rushes by And it's real people Makes a stranger feel at home Out here under the big sky like a nightmare when I try to move my feet they stay right where they are Cause in this place so close to heaven I've got everything a man could ever need a cabin on the mountainside I like so, to use the word communicating. Communicating. Okay, it's communicating to you what your fly is doing. Exactly. And so, and it has to tell you that it's hitting bottom, it's hitting fish, it's drifting too high, it's drifting too low. Or the fly is dragging. Exactly. And so there's a multitude, this is probably the newest. Uh, it went kind of through a transformation over the last 20 years. We started with uh, probably the first one was just a piece of fly line that we used to slide, or actually maybe before that was just a bright colored piece of uh, fly think, line at the tip of your fly line. They used yeah. to just brightly color. Well, that. I think the very first one that I've ever seen, and that would have been in the, you know, in the fifties, was a, a bright colored monofilament tied as a butt section. Exactly, exactly. And then, then we went to taking the thirteen weight fly line and stripping right. it, running up your leader, which I still like that, but it's really hard to see. And then we went to these ice fishing bobbers. They kind of came in. Then we went to the yarn. Or we went to wool, then to yarn. Right. And but we tied the yarn on with knots. We didn't. Exactly. And now all of a sudden we've got a way of tying it on. I don't know how many times I had to show people knots to put the yarn on. Now this exactly. is the best way. And this you is, can move it. You can move this. It's real easy. You know, they float like corks. You know, They're, it's real easy to see. They come in a multitude of colors. These new ones, which is called a roundicator, same prim, you know, principle as the, uh, the yarn, but it's all foam. Yeah. And these come in. I've got probably 20 different colors of these uh, I'm not sure they you know they usually come in four packs like this uh, then there's the the peg style these are you loop onto your line and then there's the bobber style here the ice fishing bobber the corkies and what they do with these is a some of them are slit so that you can put your line in and then peg it with a toothpick like that yep. and there's another way to do that that I like and I these we use these in the east a lot for steelhead fishing because they were they're really light and they're pretty aerodynamic if you put them on right. I have a piece I'll show you real quick how I rig these things up for uh, without using a peg. The problem with pegging or toothpicking these is that, as you know, your line can, when you're casting right. your line gets wrapped around that a lot. And there's another way to do this, and you can move it this way. 
uh, you run this through just right through the hole and then run it back through the hole like that so now you've got it and this would be up at your butt section of your fly line way you know right up towards the where the fly line and the leader meet so then you've got a loop here and you just simply take the tippet and run through the loop again and what that does is it puts that in line so there's no peg and if you want to change it you just pull the bottom part out comes the loop and, and you, you change it. your distance and you can move it yeah it's real simple great uh, idea so just another way to do it i just don't the toothpicks i'm always hooking them it just seems yeah. like i'm constantly when you put lead onto a leader yeah. two fly rigs and too many things can happen that just simplifies but what i do is a little different than this i know we're going to run a couple different systems today uh, how i'm running today in here is called a right angle system and a friend of ours andy burke from Truckee, uh, yep. California. He's the guy that showed. I never figured out how these guys used this yarn stuff in the originally, because we always used these back mm -hmm. east. And, uh, Andy was the guy that showed me how to do this. And I've just fallen. I, I use this for steelhead. I use it for trout, both. But this is called the right angle system. And what it is, it's the old way. You can use the roundicators. I like to use yarn. And what I do is I just buy yarn and then I cut it. And I use a little comb, brush it out. But what I've done is I just wrap the, uh, this is an old butt section. It's about two foot long a butt section. You can make this two to four foot. And I take a piece of yarn and put a clinch knot right around the middle of it, mm -hmm. tighten it down. And then you comb this out, fluff it all up. And I like pretty small indicators. I, I, have, I like to be able to pull it through my guides. And yeah. that's, that's important because, you know, if you've got a nine foot leader and you can't get that through your guides, you're stuck. The fish is too far away from you. You can't land them very easily. But what the beauty of the right angle system is you take the, your indicator and then you do another clinch knot above that and they just butt into each other. But what you've got is I'm using 2x leader here. I don't have any taper. And because the 2x is so fine, it cuts through the water very quickly. So I'm, I'm using a single BB shot and that gets me down in this fast water because I'm not having to pull the line, the leader, the tapered leader down. And it, it's very short. And what I'm, and what I like to do, and everybody's got a little different formula, and it's a little bit, you know, by chance, but I like to use one and a half times the depth of the water mm -hmm. to my lead. That, that's about right, because it's about a 45 degree yeah. angle. And with this light tippet, it drops so quickly but I've got, and we're fishing out here in a, you know, two foot of water, so I've got about three and a half foot here. And that varies, I, you know, if you know you're gonna be changing depth a lot, you wanna go a little bit longer, so you're not, you don't ever wanna be off, you know, too high off the bottom. But the closer that lead and indicator are to each other, like you say, it communicates quicker. One it, thing I wanna take a look at here is, is this uh, uh, lead shot. I wanna show uh, everybody how he set this up because he put a blood knot there and used that as a section of his tippet, as you can see here, to connect the flies. And this lead shot won't go any farther down. Yeah. Nothing worse is as you cast, no matter how much you squeeze pull down it. or squeeze mm -hmm. on that uh, split shot, eventually ends up on your fly and you have a exactly. lead-headed bead head. Exactly. And it just, exactly. it, 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 and this way you'll have the flies free swing. And it's just a really simple, easy way yep. to think about that. And then, and then you can adjust this up or down, but you right. need to have a blood knot there. You have to have something to stop it uh, down to the flies. Now this, you've got your flies set up here. This is just a standard two fly rig mm -hmm. where uh, I didn't trim my little knot very well. We'll, where, we'll grade you down on that. You lost that. 10 points on that deal. It happens. Uh, I noticed you're going to the bend. Yep. Now, and something I do, and it's just another way of doing this, is I'll take and do a, another blood knot mm -hmm. and leave the, the uh, tail, as you call it, on the blood knot mm -hmm. and then attach the nymph like a, the mm -hmm. old style dropper. That's I've, just another way of doing it. And, it. and you can also do this off the eye. Right. If, you're, I generally, if I'm doing a fly that has any, that I want to have any effect that looks like it's ascending through right. the water, I tie the bottom one off the the bend so right. it kind of pulls it and I've just got a, a 14 serendipity there and I've got a little Johnny Flash that's the most amazing thing to me about this river and it always has been how small a fly in that turbulent whitewater you right. can throw 
and they still find it. But that's what they're eating. But that's, I mean, how could you hook a fish with you didn't know that that was exactly <laughs> they had a strike it's with that little apply little tiny 20s and I and I've got another system here I was going to show uh, for the same and this one gets a little bit more I've got an indicator still on there this one's just a little different system this was uh, in the rivers where you've got a lot of emerging insects caddis mayflies doesn't really matter uh, but especially with the caddis where they don't really swim they just when they pupate they just kind of float to the surface uh, I like to use a, a dropper system and that's what, what I, I was talking about right. that type and of you're bite. using a you're using the tag off your blood knot right and what I've got here is I've just done a, a palmer knot or a right. surgeon's loop doesn't right. matter what loop you've used what I do is I tie it just like we did the other one I've got a blood knot to stop the lead from dropping down and I've got my bottom what I've got here is I've got, and this is on pretty heavy line, this is eight pound, so we could see it, but this is a caddis pupa, or a larva, excuse me. And then above that, I've got my split shot, and then I'm gonna have this dropper. And this has got a loop in it, and all I do is I've got another another blood knot, right. and I'm gonna put that loop behind. Great idea. Behind here, and put this through. Oh, I like that idea. And what that's going to do, when it tightens down above that knot... Got to be above that uh, knot. Above the blood knot. But what it's done is it's given me... It's doubled up so it keeps the fly away from the, the line. And this right. one's going to look like it's pupating, ascending through the water. The lead's going to be on the bottom. So I've got a larva down here, and I've got a Gary LaFontaine sparkle pupa on here. It's ascending up through the water. Right. But it keeps it away from the fly or the the leader a little bit. And the other thing that's really nice about this, and then a lot of this came from where we were fishing steelhead, is this will slide. Right. And if you've got a fly or a fish on the bottom fly and he catches something, there's not a lot of the logs in this river. Where I'm from in Michigan, uh, you know, you fish right. there. There's tons of wood in the river. If you happen to have a fish on the bottom fly and he's running away from you, and the upper fly hooks you lose everything. Right. With this system, it slides up to the heavier line and you lose the upper fly, but you still get the fish. Now that's, that's a great, that's but the, a great system. But the most important thing is that, that it holds the fly off to the edge yep. and you can adapt that to any depth. If you think the fish are up two foot, you know, you can slide that up right. easy. And, and not so many people will try a nymph at one depth right. and say it doesn't work. Right. And, and, and it really is where the fish are feeding. Exactly. So you've got to move that fly around. You've got to move it through the whole uh, water area before you can say that fly isn't working. Exactly. And you have to know that if it's swinging up, is, why did he take the fish or the fish take on the swing up? And that can tell you to, and you really, and that's one of the things about nymph fishing is you hear people talking about going out and just, you know, they'll say they don't like to nymph fish. They yeah. don't want to, you know, tre dredge the water. Well, there are so many variables right. to nymph fishing, to, to a good nymph angler, that has to be done. I mean, you have to decide if the fish is low, is he high, is he in the middle, is he taking a fly that's swimming rapidly through, is he taking a caddis diving down. There's a multitude of, of well, ways to guess the game. If now, you, you were talking about here matching a hatch, and here's mm -hmm. another way, when we talk about indicators, is actually doing the same thing, but more towards the surface. Now we're going to have a PMD hatch this afternoon, according to you, and I have an adult PMD that, mm -hmm. and, and this is a, a peril wolf. It's mm -hmm. going to sit right on the surface, and right behind that I have uh, an emerger. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a, we've got a little uh, a copper john, about a size uh, 18 or 20, and what's going to happen is we're we're, we're actually covering two different. Uh, mm -hmm areas, both the surface and behind. And this will act like an indicator. It's yeah. not yarn, it's not any of this. And I can actually bring this to as close as three inches. Right. And that's not gonna spook a fish because it's matching the actual hatch. Right. And I don't think we, we missed that a little bit when you're talking about the That is probably the first indicator. Right. Is people using the big pair of wolves, like right. your, your big pair of wolf, or anything that was, uh, any of the wolf patterns originally, you'd see those floating or hopper droppers right. like we were fishing Well, we're going to show you, we're going to show uh, this. The hopper, here's the hopper dropper. We got a Amy's Ann on here. Uh, and I mean, this could be anything. I mean, it could be a Royal Wolf. It could be any kind mm -hmm. of indicator, but we know there's hoppers here. So we, let's be yeah. a little smarter. 
we might be able to catch them on an indicator. How long did we take? Two minutes to get yep, a fish in Yeah, two on minutes, and we got a nice rainbow right off the bat. But that but, system there is probably the most popular, you know, hopper droppers. And, right. It, uh, it's a searching thing. Yeah, kind of, searching. Now, if you start getting exactly. nothing uh, but fish on this, you might consider getting rid of this and putting an indicator exactly. on it. Exactly, yeah. And that's what we do most of the time is just we'll run that. You know, you hope that you start getting them on the hopper more right. because it's, you know, you get to watch fun. it all happen. A lot more fun seeing the fish come up exactly. to the surface, but it's also more fun to have a fish on than looking at this all day. <laughs> uh, so I, I think that's a, you know, the only disadvantage of this, you say, well, why don't you always use this? Well, one of the things is you, this fly, of course, floats mm -hmm. and it has a hook on it and it means you can tangle. And a lot of people just have a tough time with it. And especially and you, in the west where there's right. so much wind. I mean, it's, it's, if we, it blows 10 miles an right. hour, there is no wind. And so. one thing to think about, this is really only effective at about three feet. Mm -hmm. When you start getting it to five feet, you have a terrible time casting, terrible time getting an indication. Mm -hmm. The deeper you go, the more you're gonna have to have that indicator closer to the fly line. And the bigger the fly has to be. That's one disadvantage, uh, you know, to beginning anglers, this is a very difficult situation because you have to have control of the line above this fly, and it's a very small fly, so it's going to get sunk quick. I think any of our viewers that fly fish uh, know that uh, you know we're you know there's no perfect thing that's going to work all yeah. the time. Everybody wants to know that what the method is going to work on every river all the time. There isn't such a thing, yeah. and we haven't got a perfect uh, uh, system other than if we hang a little camera there. That would work. 